Okay. I know that logo. <laughs> when did you make that logo? What year? Oh, let's see. I think 2014. <laughs> did you crash it? Oh, yeah. That, 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 there goes everything. Oh, no. <laughs> my work. My life's work. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> maybe, we do, maybe we are doing too much. Yeah, we broke it. <laughs> let's see. Bong. All right. Get to the next scene. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Do I believe it. in you. Come on, Apple. Yeah, yeah, okay. Works this time. <laughs> That's the, the classic VR experience, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, so 2014 you made that logo. So how many games have you released in that time? Oh, man. Oh, you knew exactly where that skip button was. I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, how many games? So there was uh, Proton Pulse, Pulse Arenas, Vanguard V Demo. And lots of unreleased or uh, business-related things. And uh, for those, you, you you said you released this before even Oculus Share, is that right? Oh yeah, yeah. So back when the DK1 first came out, uh, it was the Kickstarter campaign, and everybody who was very early in that Kickstarter started to receive their dev kits uh, April of 2013, I believe it was. And there was a forum. It was that this was basically the sum of all Oculus stuff was just a forum to share things. And Proton was the first game. And I remember when I released this on that forum, uh, people were going like, wow, it's a complete thing because it's got like a menu and music. And that's not really a high bar when it comes to games. But at the time it was. Give me. Recap for me how you got your headset, right? Because, like, you were pretty early, right? Yeah, I was within the first hour of the car Kickstarter going live. And, um, uh, like, it, it was really important to me. I had been a VR enthusiast uh, before the DK1, but there really wasn't anything that was worth even talking about, really. Uh, and so I had modified like the sony hmz t1 3d viewer uh i had the emation and the z800 and the 3d effects over the years but nothing really took off nothing stuck not, nothing really had the field of view that the dk1 looked like it was promising so i i kicked in for that right away and uh was one of the few first developers to get a hold of it and I just wanted to make things, you know. It was, it was basically my passion to do so. Uh, was, I was actually surprised how easy it was to work on when it first came out. It's it's funny. Like, why did you decide this particular type of game? Like, Breakout is is such a classic, but it's like this has been done. I mean, this this it's a pretty common game design thing to try out, I guess, with like a new platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, but one of the things I saw early on was people making announcements like how they're going to want to try this first-person shooter or this other game that already existed without taking into consideration, well, is it better or made for VR in the first place? And I didn't want to have a controller. I just wanted to have... Um, a game built from the ground up made for VR. So that's where Proton Pulse came in, where oh. let's just use your head movement as the main input. Yeah, and, and this had, you did you say you made like, so you, you released on Gear VR and Cardboard as well, right? Oh yeah. Uh, also, uh, PlayStation VR has this title. And so which platform or which storefront did you make the most money on? Uh, so, strangely enough, it was iOS. It was the Apple Store. Because while it didn't have, like, a dedicated um, headset, it was compatible with the uh, cardboard and cardboard-like devices. And so, yeah, it just, it just kind of took off. And so, uh, sorry, go ahead. After that, it was uh, Google Cardboard. Hmm. Interesting. So, so the two non, like, non-native VR platforms. Interesting that it's like, 
I mean, you're, you're saying Google Play and iOS, right? To yeah. app stores. And like, I don't know. It's you, you saw our headline. We wrote a headline. I called this uh, VR's first good game for, for Vision Pro. And like, how does that feel to have that, like, to be there day one on this platform? Uh, so from a developer's point of view, I, I felt like I was late more than anything because a month had gone by. I wanted to get a headset in advance to release content uh, at the very, very beginning. And so when this came out uh, and I took a step back, I'm like, whoa, whoa, where's the other full, fully immersive games? I should be <laughs> like one of many. And there wasn't. And I was, I, I, I was kind of shocked. Because when you're in development, you're, you're, you're basically heads down working. And that's bitten me uh, a, a couple of times in the past. Like when I named Vanguard V, Vanguard Valkyrie, and without realizing there was another Valkyrie VR game coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that was. And you immediately changed it. Yeah, so um, one of these questions, like you've. You've been watching this space for a really long time. Like, I mean, g give me, how old are you and what was your first computer? Let's start there. All right, so uh, let's see. The first computer I got to use was a Commodore VIC-20. Um, I still have it actually, but uh, I think when I had access to it, it wasn't new by any means. I mean, the Commodore 64, and I think even the Amiga was out by that point. Um, my first computer was one I saved up for and bought a used Amiga 500, which is what this game is heavily based off of, is my experience of the early 90s computing. Like the multi-ball we saw earlier in the previous level with the red and white checker is the tech demo and kind of unofficial logo of the Amiga computer at the time. Mm. Uh, and this portion of this song is actually a remake of a Arkanoid type game for the Amiga called Mega Ball. Can I ask? Uh, so, so bring me up to present now, okay? So, like that's your that's your sort of beginnings, and mm -hmm. then you're watching and interested in VR for a really long time, and like, yeah, you're, you you say you're surprised that you're one of the only immersive games on this platform. What what does it mean for you that this headset exists? That that your game is on it. Oh man, so this headset existing is, it just brings a smile to my face. Not because of like the quality of the visuals or the pass through or anything like that. That's only gonna get better on all headsets. But with Apple coming into the fray and Sony here and Meta with a good history of releasing um, decent hardware, it's only getting bigger, it's not getting smaller. We had it seen time and time again VR is dead, or VR is a gimmick, and it's anything but. It's it's getting bigger, and so now we see movie studios releasing their 3D content. We're getting new content all the time. It's finally being taken very, very seriously, and that thrills me. Yes. All right. Well, that's uh, Justin Moravitz. Is that how it, did I pronounce your name right? How do you pronounce your name? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you got it right. Awesome. Spot on. Well, and how many levels do you have here in Proton Pulse? Let's see, I think 52. So there's 16 levels per world, three, uh, then there's bosses, and then there's a huge event at the end. But yeah, it's it gets pretty intense uh, yeah. when you fight the boss fights. And, you know, like, I get, let me get it in your words. Explain to me the design thinking. I'll leave this on the last question. So, like, give me how you arrived at head tracked input and, and sort of resisting the urge to go beyond like uh h how did you arrive at something that works on every vr headset imaginable when i wake up i think about vr input that's like my favorite thing and so when it came to this i'm like i don't want to use my hands because a controller just a standard gamepad doesn't fit let's just do something more intuitive when you play, when you see somebody play Super Mario Brothers, for instance, and they're trying to get over a big jump, you see their entire body lean over. I'm like, that's what I want for the input. So that's when I decided to make Proton head tracked on life. Mm. Awesome. Well, thank you for the time. And uh, I'm going to go check our recording and see if we've got this uh, locked in. Uh, but I'm impressed this worked. Uh, 
Thank you for <laughs> going through the crash there at the beginning and, and getting through this with me. This is awesome. Thank you, Justin. Oh, yeah, my pleasure.